an earlier period in the Ottoman, Ottoman history, you can't find it anyway, They've, even if you didn't know. So, so it's, um, your, your question is a good one, and I don't have a good answer. I, 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 um, maybe someday someone will. Who was killed? Well, this number is, as with all these disasters, most humanitarian disasters, the numbers are sort of striking and a bit perplexing. So the Turkish, uh, the Turkish numbers say 800,000 Armenians were killed, but this was all part of the war. They say, look, these were all wartime deaths. Ironic, since there's no war going on in eastern Anatolia, with the exception of some border skirmishes, right? But the idea that these are wartime deaths, Muslims were killed too. Um, this is an unfortunate event of war. So they say about 800,000. The count is probably closer. I say over a million. Um, uh, folks who um, uh, who've studied this story say it's about 1.5 million. And again, there were about 2 million um, Armenians living um, on the border. There's some de demography studies being done now to figure out the actual number of Armenians living. There were no census statistics on these folks um, in this period. People are trying to uncover that. There was also no survey of mass graves after the war, and that, becomes, um, that also becomes a problem in, in figuring out the number of, of, of actual dead. But this number represents um, folks who, um, who died in that moment, in 1915, the, 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 from deportation, from um, massacre and, and starvation. It completes a, it, 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 what it does is it, it creates a complete demographic shift in these villages that used to be majority, minority population, minor, again, majority, minority, but minority Christian populations now, um, that, 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 that is completely um, wiped up. Uh, Orhan Pamuk, who won the Nobel Prize a few years back, writes about this in his novels and, and has gotten a lot of trouble with the Turkish government. One of the things he writes about is going to some of these, these old Armenian villages and asking questions about who used to live here. And they say, oh, we don't know. We don't know what happened to the Armenians. And, there, and there's this sort of story. I mean, it really creates an incredible incredible demographic shift, and since no one's left, these stories, of course, are not told um, and, uh, and are not um, part of it. Though a lot of this property is still in Armenian names, which is sort of interesting. They haven't transferred that, so it's, it's a very strange sort of overlapping of, 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 of histories. Well, let's talk about the Western response. The Bryce Report is really important. Um, the Murderous Tyranny of the Turks, that pamphlet you read, comes out of the Bryce Report. And I want to talk about the Bryce Report. You'll be happy that wasn't assigned reading since it's 733 pages. Um, <laughs> it was published by James Bryce, by Count James Bryce, in October of 1916. As soon as news gets out, they know about these massacres in early May. Um, at, in the West, which is pretty remarkable since, I mean, there's no internet, <laughs> mail's slow. I mean, they know that this is happening in early May. And immediately, the, um, the James Bryce is, is commissioned to write a parliamentary blue book, which is a report on what's happening there. So he does, and he puts it together in a year with Arnold Toynbee, who wrote the, the pamphlet you read. And it contains compelling evidence from over 100 sources on Turkish atrocities during the genocide. Uh, again, it's issued as an official record, a parliamentary blue book. It contains eyewitnesses, sec eyewitness accounts, secondhand accounts tr from travelers, missionaries, civilians, aid workers, and political represent representatives on atrocities. It's just a catalog. It's 733 pages of atrocity listing what, what's going on. Although Bryce claimed when he was writing this that he was avoiding, quote, questions of future policy, the evidence contained in these books really makes the case for humanitarian and diplomatic intervention. I mean, these were political. I mean, you don't compile 733 pages, put it on the desk at Parliament and say, here's evidence of massacres, let's not do anything, right? Bryce clearly understood it. Bryce himself had a great affection for Armenia. He trekked to the top of Mount Ararat, which is the historic mountain in Armenia in 1876. He fell in love with it, and he became one of the folks that founded the Eastern Question Association. So there's no accident that James Bryce is doing this. He is an advocate for Armenians from the beginning. Um, uh, Toynbee is someone that he brings on later to, to help him compile it. Toynbee is a historian, an Oxford historian. The Bryce Report has tremendous influence in both the United States and in Britain, um, and it makes the case for genocide. The Bryce Report itself is interesting because it's, it's, it's part of a constellation of things that, that come out during this period that, um, that, 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 really tell, that really makes it clear the West understands what's going on. May 24, 1915, there's a joint European declaration accusing Turkey of crimes against, and this is a quotation, the first time this is ever used, crimes against humanity and civilization. It's issued and sent to Turkey in May 1915 which is sort of remarkable. The genocide starts on April 24th. By the end of that month, the Europeans are issuing a joint declaration that say you are guilty of crimes against 
humanity and, um, and civilization. Pamphlets are published, like the, the, the Toynbee pamphlet. Um, that pamphlet you read would have been, it was published in 1917, it would have been for sale for about five cents in the United States. It was also published simultaneously in, in Britain. That pamphlet is sort of interesting. I think it, it follows the, the sort of plan of the Bulgarian um, horrors, the uh, Gladstones, but it does really set, some, set it Self apart by arguing for the exceedingly, and this is a word he uses, exceedingly systematic. I'm not sure you can get exceedingly systematic, but exceedingly systematic execution um, that was indicated that it, uh, of this of this crime. It happens in reg it happens throughout Turkey. It happens in the same way. It has a method, and so that pamphlet is really important. And again, it comes right out of the Bryce report. Um, the next thing it does is it establishes a pattern of mass killing and rape. And, other, and, and finally, the last chapters, and again, you've read this, so you know what I'm talking about, it chronicles the deportations and death toll to implicate Germany in the massacres. Now, what's going on? Why are all these things coming out? Is it just about a humanitarian movement that's, that's anxious and grows up? Well, there's a geopolitics to this, and it's really important that we understand that. So I'd like to talk about how this evidence that we've been discussing gets construed and understand, and if you will, filtered back through the media. It's sort of like a game of telephone where you start with one whisper and it goes on and on and on. And by the time it gets filtered down to the mass of the population, I think the, the story becomes um, distorted in some, in some ways and, um, and, and, and really it becomes problematic for the later um, attempt to prosecute um, um, uh, the Ottoman government for war crimes. Uh, reporting the uh, genocide was a hot button issue even then. It's not just Nancy Pelosi and Obama who are having trouble <laughs> with this story. Um, even then, folks, folks had some trouble. And they had some, some real um, objections from folks who said, look, Toynbee and Bryce, you have an anti-Muslim bias. And you are, think of the title, murderous tyranny of the Turks, right? I mean, you know, you are, you are, um, you are, you are targeting Muslims unfairly, and this is about, um, this is about politics. So their response to this at the time was, and this is a quote um, from um, Bryce, there was no Muslim passion against the Armenian Christians. All was done by the will of the government and not, not done for any religious fanaticism, but simply because they wished for reasons purely political to get rid of the non-Muslim element which impaired the homogeneity of the empire. So at the time, there's a sense, look, this is, we're not, this is not about a holy war here. This is about political, nationalist sentiment that gets out of control, right? And that become, becomes very clear because a lot of folks are saying at the time, look, Britain is the largest Muslim power in the world at this time with the empire. So if you alienate Muslim public opinion just from a practical standpoint, you're going to alienate members of the empire. It's also understood that, that, that the, this idea that it's a campaign against a particular religion makes people very uncomfortable at this time, much as it did for us after September 11th. The idea is, look, this is not a, this is not a war against Islam, right? And Toynbee and Bryce are very keen to say that about, um, about the, um, um, the, uh, the agitation against, uh, against the genocide. The Blue Book itself remains one of the most complete bodies of evidence of the genocide, even still today. Um, it's really meticulous and incredibly, incredibly tedious to go through. Um, so tedious that Toynbee said to Bryce, look, we should get rid of some of these bits and make it more condensed so people will read it. And Bryce said, no, this is a record of what happened. And if we start fiddling around and editing down testimony, people are going to accuse us of not telling the whole story. So what did they do instead? There's a reader's guide at the front. And it, and, it, and it excerpts or it, it, it highlights some of the most dramatic um, stories that are, are chronicled in this blue book. And I think one of the most um, uh, moving ones is document nine as it as it's, as shows up in this, in this list. Um, and it simply reads, letter conveyed out of Turkey in the sole of a refugee's shoe. So the idea here is that you don't read the whole 733-page report, but you understand its weight and its volume and its, and its complexity and its completeness, really, as evidence. And then you sort of move through. And, it, and it's meant for consumption by government officials, certainly, but it's also meant that the, the, that the public sees this. Again, 1916 this comes out, which is a pretty, um, pretty early bit. The Blue Book is also used for propaganda, and that's important to know, that the Blue Book is used to get the United States in the war. They say, look, if they...